To better understand the benefits of using CSS, we also need to understand it a little bit better. And the cascade part of style sheets is where we need to start. There are three basic parts to using CSS. We can have an inline style. So around a particular tag, like a paragraph tag, we could put for the P, we would have P space, we could actually start typing style equals and actually put our color or our font or whatever we want inside of that particular style. The problem with inline styling is specifically around that individual piece and if I wanted to change that later on, I would have to go and open that page again to be able to change it. The next part is embedded styling. Remember when we went to File, New, and we opened, so let's just do that again so we can talk about that one more time. So File and New, and we have our starter pages. Over on the right-hand column, it said Add to Head. Now this would be adding it to my head tags. And again, the problem with this is that it is on that specific page and not on a multitude of pages. I'm just going to go ahead and cancel. So for this particular page that I happen to have up, which is my liquid sidebar that we used in the last lesson, I can already see that I already have a style sheet attached to it. So I have a two column liquid right header dot CSS style sheet. Now this is an external style sheet. We saw in our source code, I'm going to go ahead and click back on my source code to take a look at that, that here I have on line six a link that is linking to that specific style sheet. The benefit of using an external style sheet is that I can style a thousand page website in just one place. Now I might end up having many more style sheets than just this one style. For instance, I can have a style sheet that's also for print or for mobile or for even presentation style, but let's concentrate on the external style at the moment. So for instance, I can have a paragraph. If I style my paragraph in my style sheet, then when the client comes back later and says that they would like that particular paragraph style to be maybe a, a, the font be a little smaller or a little bigger or even a different font entirely, then we have just one place that we can go to to make those changes at. So working with a thousand page website is really as simple as making sure that I understand where the styles are at and targeting those particular styles in my style sheet to make it easier for me to work with a thousand pages. But even if you have a small site, making sure that you have an external style in place that you can change easily will make your life a lot simpler. There's another part to the cascade that we don't normally even think about. Now the cascade actually starts at the browser and the end user. So for instance, within our style sheets, Let's say that we have a heading applied. If I'm looking at the page on my screen, I see instructions. And instructions has a style applied to it. So if I click on it, I see that it's a heading one. So let's say that we have three different things of our styles. So we understand the cascade a little bit better. If I have this heading one in green, let's say in our external style, if it's in red embedded style, and if it's blue in our inline style, then our inline style takes precedence over our embedded and our external style. If I don't have something styled in line, then anything that I have styled embedded takes over what is styled in an external style. And then my external style is last. So if I want to override a particular element on my page in CSS, I can use either embedded or inline and that will override something very specific. But again, you wouldn't want to use that very often because you have to come back to that particular page to change the style, which is why external styles are used most often. So we need to understand our rules just a little bit better first. So let's take a look at that. I'm going to go ahead and take a look at our two column style sheet. And I will just go to code view so we can take a better look at it. So within an actual style sheet, we have several different types of elements. And these are called rules. And within our rule, we have our properties and our values for that particular rule. So for instance, we'll just take a look at the body tag that we have to begin with. 
So we can style tags like our body, our H1, our H2, links, etc. We can also style elements that we have specifically on our page. For instance, if I wanted a particular bit of text to be blue, I can make what's called a class style, and then I would have to highlight that and make that particular little bit of text blue through that class style. Again, it's in my style sheet, so I can go back and change it to red if I would prefer that to be red later on, and I don't have to actually click on the actual page itself. We also have something called a compound style. So for instance, if I have a footer on my page, and I may not want the paragraph inside of that footer to be the same size or maybe even the same color um, as the rest of my page. So if I take a look at the design view again for that particular page, I see that I have some links over on the side. This is a really great example of why I may not want that to be the same globally. So for instance, I have an unordered list is what's made up for this particular navigation. So I have a UL, LI, and it also has a value applied to it. I'm going to take a look at the code for just a minute. And my source code scroll to find my little navigation there on the side and I see that I have a UL tag, so that's my unordered list, that's what the UL is. I have an LI for my link one, and now there's just a pound inside of the actual link itself, which is really just saying, please replace this with whatever the link is going to be eventually. It means nothing other than it allows me to style that particular link. And then I finish off with my tag. Now, if we take a look at the design, we see that that doesn't look like a typical unordered list. So in my CSS rules over on the side, if I scroll down to that particular area, so there's my ul.nav, ul.navli, etc. And this is what's called a compound. So I am saying the ul and inside of that what the a tag is then styled at, the visited, hover state, active state, etc., all within the same rule so that only that section looks different than the rest of my page. If I put a regular list item on my page, it's going to look totally different than that, and that's a great example of a compound style. So we have tags, class styles, and compound styles that we use most often. And again, let's take a look at the actual style itself. So body then is my tag, and I don't have to have anything in front of it to declare it. So I have my body. Inside of my curly braces, I have the property and the value listed, and I can have several things. So I see that I've got my font, size, my font family, what my background color is going to be, what my margin and my padding is going to be, and my text color for a global default for my body tag. We'll go more in depth into what CSS does in just a little bit.